Hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to make an attempt today to uh, to do uh, the portion of the lectures that I used to do on the light table to project where I work through problems uh, using video in my uh, digital SLR. Uh, I hope it works and, and uh, bear with me as I try it. The first thing I was going to do today uh, was something called uh, uh, layout load distance scores. Layout load distance scores are covered in the uh, layout strategy slides and uh, I did spend a few minutes talking about them in the lecture that I recorded. What layout load distance scores allow you to do is to compare different uh, different layouts to see which one is the best from an interaction perspective. And so what you do is you take a look at uh, departments and the degree to which they need to interact and, uh, and evaluate uh, the distance that people have to travel based on the number of interactions they have. So I'm going to do a fairly straightforward one to start. As always, I will post uh, if not exactly what I write here, the notes that I've used because I have them in PDF format. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. This one I'm going to do is a relatively straightforward one. I have a horizontal space where I have four similarly uh, sized departments. And the question will be, given this uh, uh, university student affairs department, Uh, develop a good layout. So we have four, four sub-departments in there. Uh, the first being petitions. The second being scheduling. The third being grade complaints. and the fourth being program advising. I'm going to take a quick break here just to check that uh, everything is still on the screen and it looks like it is legible. So uh, we'll continue. So the question would be given this uh, develop a, a good layout and we're going to take a look at two different layouts. The first information you would need here is the number of trips between departments. And so uh, this would be data you would collect or data in this case for the course that you would be given. So from A to B there are four trips, from B to A uh, there are six, and this would be trips per day, trips per week, as long as it would be trips within a, a specified uh, period of time. Uh, and uh, it, it is information that you're getting. So A to C, 10, C to A, 10, B to D, 5, D to B, 5, A to D, 10, D to A, 20, C to D, 15, and D to C, 5. Uh, what you would normally do is put that information into a matrix A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Clearly between A and A, C and B and B, C and C, there are zeros, so the diagonals are zeros. And then we're just going to fill it in from above. So all I am doing here is I'm taking the numbers from above, sort of B to C, B to C is 7, C to B is uh, C to B is 8, uh, and so I'm just filling in the matrix here. So I have that information now. Uh, I've got it collated in a way that makes some sense. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to consolidate the data because I am really not interested in, you know, I go from B to A six times and from A to B six times. I'm really not that worried about the direction in which I travel. So I'm going to take that data and consolidate it into a new uh, matrix. So I'm going to take this stuff out of the right hand side and uh, going back to uh, this here, I'm going to take B to A, A to B and add them together, 6 and 4, that becomes 10. I'm going to take C to A and A to C, both of those are 10, add them together and get 20. I'll take D to A and A to D and that becomes 30 and similarly I am going to uh, fill out the rest of this aggregated matrix and this gives me now the number of trips between uh, those locations uh, irrespective of uh, the direction. I'm going to then do a quick and easy layout. Let's just say this is the current layout. A, B, C, D, uh, and I'm going to do a load distance score. The load distance score by itself doesn't tell us a whole bunch. It gives us a method of comparing the relative performance of different layouts. So uh, if you look at distances, which is the next thing you need, you have loads uh, here. The number of trips is the loads. Uh, the distances give you uh, the uh, uh, the distances give you how far you have to travel. So the way I generally do it, and you can do it as long as you do it consistently, it doesn't matter. So. Uh, you could say adjacent rooms are 1 and then A to C is 1, 2 and A to D is 1, 2, 3. Uh, so the, so the, the obvious way is to, do, uh, is to do 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So uh, that, that makes a, a ton of sense but there is a way that you can simplify things a little bit. If you say that adjacent rooms are, uh, uh, are zero, that as long as you do it consistently, it doesn't matter. If that causes you problems when you're doing these calculations, just do one. But I will generally do zero or one. Two rooms apart. I will then generally do two just because it makes it clearer in my head and I have to do the math anyway. So I'll do one, two. You could do, if you do this zero, you could do that as one. I just find that that gets people a little bit con confused. And so three rooms apart, generally three. So uh, this makes it a, an easy way to calculate distances. While we don't need it for this example, uh, let me show you what you might do uh, if you had uh, something that looked like this instead. If you had something that looked like this instead, you could do 1 or 0 between A and C, 1 or 0 between A and B, and then uh, depending on your configuration of your building, uh, the distances would be different. But I generally, and I think the general practice is that you do uh, metropolitan or right angle travel. So A to D would be 1, 2. That's, that's the way to do it. And if there was an E down here, uh, A to E would be 1, 2, 3. So that would be uh, the way that you look at distances if you have it in more than one dimension. In this case, we really only have one dimension so that it makes it relatively straightforward. So let's then do a low distance score for the original layout ABCD. 
the load distance score. Uh, first you would do A to B equals 10, which was uh, the number here from that matrix times 0, which was the distance equals zero. So you can see why I when, when it's one I make it zero it just makes the math easier. Uh, you could and I will show you uh, if you do that as one uh, then you would get 10 here and I'll show you that the results are the same. Again the absolute number of the load distance score doesn't matter a whole bunch. It's comparing different load distance scores that evaluate the performance of your layout. So A to C is equal to 20 times 2 uh, equals 40. Uh, that's the same in both cases. A to D is equal to 30 times 3 equals 90. Uh, B to C equals 15 times 0 equals 0 or 15 times 1 equals 15. Uh, B to D is equal to 10 times 2 equals 20 and C to D is equal to 20 times 0 or 20 times 1 equals 20. So if I add up this I get 130, 150 and if I add it up uh, uh, with the distances being 1 I'll get uh, 25 35, 185. So two completely uh, directly comparable, uh, uh, completely valid ways of doing it gives us slightly different numbers but it doesn't affect uh, it doesn't affect our relative comparison as long as we do it as long as we execute it consistently. So consistently. So we'll look at those low distance scores when we compare another layout. So in this case we would look at how might we uh, lay things out uh, differently and this was our uh, original layout A, B, C, D and we got a load distance score of 150 or 185. Uh, if, if I ask you uh, uh, to say to improve this layout the, if I ask you to improve this layout uh, I wouldn't ask you to come up with the best one so you wouldn't have to calculate a bunch of them you would just have to say here is a better layout and prove it given your low distance score. So if I'm looking here uh, low distance score is a function of distance and loads uh, and so A and D had, had 30 here trips and they were far apart so that's clearly going to make the low distance score a little bit higher. So, so a hint uh, in, in looking at ways to improve your low distance score is look at things that are that have big numbers uh, and uh, put those things close together. So if I look here A and B don't need to necessarily be close together um, B and C don't necessarily need to be close together. B and D don't necessarily need to be close together, but A and D should be close together. Uh, A and C should be close together and C and D should be relatively close together. So if I if I look at that, then I might take uh, when I do a new layout, let's just say I'm gonna we said uh, we wanted A and D to be close together so let's leave D there and put A there. We thought C and A and C and D should be relatively close together and B and D did not need to be close together. So I'm going to try that, lay that layout and then I'm going to do uh, the low distance score A to B. The number of trips has not changed we're now one, two apart. This is the distance equals 20. Uh, A to C is 20, which is just the loads or the number of trips from our uh, aggregated matrix uh, times 0 equals 0, or if we use the other one, times 1 is equal to 20 because they are right next to each other now. A to D. 
30 times 0, so you can see that weight is going to be, is going to disappear, equals 0, or 30 times 1 equals 30. Uh, B to D is 10 times 3, so we know there are 10 trips, 1, 2, 3 is the distance, uh, equals 30. B to C is 15 times 0 equals 0, or 15 times 1, if we use that distance, equals uh, 15. And then finally, C to D, 20 times 2 is equal to 40. Uh, and we can then calculate our low distance score, uh, which we have 40 plus 30 plus 20 is 90 or if we used the distances as 1 when they're adjacent, we would add 50, 65 to it as 155. We can then compare it compare it to those original numbers and, and we will see that our new layout has a low distance score of 90 versus a low distance score of 150 or using 1 for adjacent low distance score of 155 versus a low distance score of 185. In this circumstance we pick the lower number, we want the lower low distance score, so we pick um, uh, we pick the new layout, we have come up with an improved layout. Now given that our final exam is going to be online, it is going to be difficult for me to ask you to redraw it. Uh, I may be able to do it, but alternately I might give you two layouts uh, and uh, if I were to include a question, uh, I, would, I would give you two layouts and ask you to uh, uh, do low distance scores for both of them and tell me which one is preferred. So again, first thing you look at at, uh, at trips between both locations, aggregate them so, because you're not worried about direction, figure out the distance between the two locations, then calculate the low distance score, do that for the second layout, compare them and pick the layout that has the lowest score. This is a relatively straightforward exercise. You just need to remember the, the steps in the process. Uh, as far as formulas go, I would give you the load times distance formula, but the rest of it you would need to remember on your own. So, not a lot I can do to try and trick you here. Uh, this is a relatively straightforward approach, and the only sort of thing that you need to remember is that you pick the smallest one. That's it for layout low distance scores. Uh, we will, uh, I will continue to post other things uh, as we work through them. Take care, I hope you're all safe and well.